When it comes to rotoscoping, two of the best tools are After Effects' Roto Brush or DaVinci Resolve's Magic Mask. But I've just tried a new AI tool and the results are pretty surprising, so I've just put all three through a stress test to see who comes out on top. This video is sponsored by Beeble, more about them a bit later on. Let's start with After Effects. This is going to be challenging footage. We filmed out in the park and there's a really complex background, so we only have to roto one frame here and then the software is going to do the rest. So I'm just going to click on the roto brush here and draw inside the area that I want to keep. And then I'm just going to go around the edges and look for any areas that need tweaking. We want to make sure this first frame is as good as possible to give the software a fighting chance. All right, I think we've done everything we need to here. It took about two minutes and 50 seconds to work through this 14 second shot. And it's definitely held on to me here, even when I'm moving fast as well. But there's definitely a lot of chattering around the edges where parts of me pop away and then back again. And it's very visually distracting. We could clean this up if we had a bit of time as well. But in this test, we're only interested in the capabilities of the automatic roto. Let's see if DaVinci Resolve does any better. This one might surprise you. So I have the same shot loaded into DaVinci Resolve as we did in After Effects. We're using the new 2.0 version of Magic Mask in DaVinci Resolve 20. This new tool does have an advantage in that it's really good at segmenting particular parts of a body. So if you want Wanted to actually just isolate hair or face or hands, you could probably do that with this tool. So I'm going to click on my head and body here to indicate that that's the part I want to keep. So now let's just track forwards and backwards through our shot. And that's super quick. It took 25 seconds to do this whole 14 second shot. Magic Mask is hands down the fastest, but my god, it does come with a few downsides. There's a lot more chattering on the edges here compared to After Effects Rotor Brush. This is much less usable in my opinion. And we just did this in DaVinci is faster mode but it does also have a better mode so I did try that as well and what it does essentially is give you a more feathered edge and in this case that's actually kind of worse now we can really start to see the background coming through especially when I'm much further away okay so what is this final tool and will it measure up this is Matt Anyone. It's an AI model designed to rotoscope footage. You can see how it handles these shots from popular movies like Joker here where he's walking down a corridor and it's managed to basically perfectly roto him out and keep all of that detail in his hair. I've got high hopes for this one. But using this on our own footage turned out to be a bit of a minefield. My first port of call turned out to be using VS Code. Basically run command line arguments to get it working. I don't recommend it. My second attempt was using Comfy UI, which is software built for running AI models. And it's node based, it's not user friendly, and it's got a steep learning curve. But then I found out that the sponsors of this video, Beeble, actually use Matt Anyone built into their relighting software. So I'm in Beeble right now. I'm just going to hit the button that says video to VFX. Now we're going to select our footage, which is exactly the same clip we just used in After Effects and DaVinci. The trick here to get Matt anyone working, instead of clicking generate full shot, we need to first hit refine alpha. That's going to tell Beeble that you want to use Matt anyone. So we're going to actually select parts of the image that we want to keep. In this case, I'm just going to hit my head and my body. From here, we can just hit confirm and then generate full shot. Beeble's just finished processing our footage and it took about 18 minutes, but you have to remember it's not just doing the roto, it's actually generating a whole bunch of different maps that are used for video relighting. It's created normals, roughness, specular, metallic, ambient occlusion, depth. It's done all of that for that piece of footage and now we can actually relight that if we want to. So here's the footage and it appears black right now, but I'm going to add a point light right here and now we can relight that piece of footage. The relighting side of Beeble is hands down the most interesting part of Beeble, but today we are actually just using them because they happen to have Matt Anyone integrated. So here's the processed result. Now this looks really good and you can see there's a lot less chattering than the previous two options we've had. There's still a little bit, but so much less. Look at the hair. It's feathered. It's actually got the detail. The same thing as you would expect from that Joker clip is happening right here. Wherever it needs to be soft, it's going to be soft. That's why it's so cool. But there is that little bit of chattering that could benefit from a bit of cleanup. And that's where it gets a bit interesting because this is just an alpha channel, not a roto tool like Magic Mask or Roto Brush. So this is where you would take this result and you could pipe it back into DaVinci Fusion or Roto Brush for extra cleanup. So here are the three results that we got from all the software on screen right now. If I had to pick one, it would definitely be Matt Anyone. But obviously all of these have different levels of controllability. Matt Anyone's just an algorithm doing Roto, whereas the other ones are tool sets 
internet and actually could really benefit from having an algorithm like Mad Anyone built in. If this is where we are right now with rotoscoping, I don't think it's going to be long before this becomes a one-stop shop for segmenting objects and people from their backgrounds. If you want to see the relighting tech of Beeble in action, you really need to watch this video next because we created a full virtual production short film in 24 hours and placed me in about four different Unreal Engine environments under different lighting conditions. And I'll see you there.